At its peak, Allbirds represented a brand that could potentially dominate the footwear market while also being eco-friendly, but somewhere along the line it all fell apart. So what really happened? How did Allbirds go from being one of the biggest prospects in the fashion industry to a potential Silicon Valley failure? Let's take a look. Welcome to the IWD Agency. Here we focus on e-commerce growth and success for our clients, and for the last 15 years we've been helping all kinds of brands online with design, development, and marketing. If you want to grow your store online, hit us up at iwdagency.com or check out a few of our customer success stories in the description below. Allbird started out as an idea by New Zealand soccer star Tim Brown. Tim played on the NZ national football team, and while he was vice captain, he often got the opportunity to try out new shoes that are specially designed for footballers. However, he felt that most sneaker companies, namely Adidas and Nike, focused way too much on making their shoes flashy instead of comfort or simplicity. Thankfully, Tim had a business school background and he correctly identified a gap in the market where people wanted simple, high-quality, eco-friendly, and most importantly, comfortable sneakers. Tim was from New Zealand, sometimes known as the land of 9 million sheep compared to just 5 million humans. It has one of the largest wool industries in the world, and with that in mind, in 2014, Tim contacted a wool industry research organization and received a research grant to develop a first-of-its-kind merino wool sneaker. Merino wool is a special kind of wool that is found only in New Zealand. It's extremely soft, super fine, and it's often considered the highest quality wool that money can buy. Tim Brown was a very smart businessman from the start. Instead of giving up precious equity in his ingenious idea by going to an investor, he decided to initially pitch the product on Kickstarter, the top crowdsourcing website in the world. His product was marketed as the world's most comfortable sneaker, and that might as well have been true. Needless to say, the Kickstarter campaign immediately went viral, and it raised $119,000 in just five days. Not only did he manage to raise funds, but he also got in some good word of mouth from the get-go. That's something you can't buy. He also partnered with a biotech engineer named Joey Zwillinger to make the sneaker as environmentally friendly as possible. The shoes were now made of entirely natural materials, including merino wool and eucalyptus tree fiber. Also, as the first few pairs were making their way into the hands of real customers through Kickstarter, the reviews were almost universally positive. They were described as slippers made of clouds and shockingly comfortable by reviewers, and this only boosted the brand's image. With a smooth start, Allbirds officially became a company in March of 2016, headquartered in Silicon Valley with Tim Brown and Joey Zwillinger acting as the founders. They were also now able to leverage some of the value they had to receive funding from venture capitalists. And in February of 2017, they had raised over $7.25 million from investors. Everything was perfect for the business thus far. Each shoe was produced in a factory in South Korea, selling at $95 a pair. They were also able to avoid wholesale losses by selling almost exclusively online and in company-owned retail stores. Over the course of the following two years, Allbirds gained an almost cult-like following. They were also receiving positive media attention. For example, Time Magazine profiled the company under the title, The World's Most Comfortable Shoes, while Insider wrote an article about them titled, We tried the world's most comfortable shoes to see if they're as great as everyone says they are. And, spoiler alert, they were. Their brand reputation was off the charts, with more positive customer feedback than almost all of the competitors. By 2018, they had sold their millionth pair, resulting in at least $95 million in sales in just two years. With the success to support themselves, Allbirds went through Series C funding in October of 2018, raising over $50 million and valuing the company at $1.4 billion. Allbirds had become a unicorn, and it seemed like there was nothing that could stop its endless rise. However, with more funds being raised, investors were keen on Allbirds expanding and releasing more products. At the time, Allbirds only sold three products, runners, loungers, and flip-flops, and this simply wasn't enough for what was now a billion-dollar company. So, with some decent money in the bank, Allbirds released their most expensive sneaker yet, a $115 sneaker called the Tree Topper. Its design was minimal, sleek, 
and had pretty much everything that customers already loved about Allbirds. There was almost no question that this line would be just as much of a success as their earlier products. However, around the same time, some of the very real problems with Allbirds started to catch up with them. Even though the sneakers they sold were undeniably comfortable, as it turns out, all-natural sneakers with no synthetic materials at all aren't very durable. This was a big problem since customers are expected to spend upwards of $100 on a pair of sneakers that they will inevitably wear. On top of that, Allbirds didn't really have the flashy or luxurious brand reputation that the sneakers like Yeezys or Jordans have, so customers couldn't really justify spending so much money on sneakers that simply wouldn't last long. One after another, blogs, videos, and reviews of how customer sneakers started to break down after just a month or two of wear and tear started to pop up. On top of that, Allbirds also started to receive overwhelmingly negative reviews for some of its products. But regardless, sales were still strong and Allbirds officially became listed on the NASDAQ on November 3rd, 2021. And with a highly successful IPO, the company was now valued at over $4 billion with a share price of $26. This was no longer a startup started by two environmentally conscious dudes. This was a whole corporation now. However, it seemed as if the company was trying desperately to expand at a time when it simply couldn't. The direct-to-customer strategy was smart when this was just a small business, but now that this was an international company, it was simply unsustainable for the business. It limited their growth and ability to offer new products, but at the same time, switching to another model would cripple their non-existent profits. That's right, Allbirds was not profitable at the time of its IPO. This isn't unusual for startups, and many expected the company to make positive changes to become profitable in the future, however, there really were no changes in the company. As more time passed, the losses kept racking up. In 2021, Allbirds' losses were at around $50 million, which was expected to come down in the following year. However, in the first half of 2022 alone, Allbirds reported more losses than all of 2021, with $51 million in losses. Much of these losses came from expansion, and the company did indeed expand. The revenue was up by 15%, and retail sales soared to 120%. But the company was practically burning through cash, and now that it was a publicly traded company, investors were starting to notice. By February of 2022, Allbirds shares had dropped to under $10, down from $26 at the IPO. As news of the company's struggles started to spread, customer dissatisfaction grew, the image of an environmentally friendly business started to weaken, and the share price kept falling and falling. In the second quarter of 2022, net losses were up by 287% year over year, and operating losses were up by 604%. This was bad news for Allbirds, and the company was practically in panic mode. On top of that, direct-to-customer businesses across the United States were facing unprecedented losses thanks to weaker spending, high inflation, and interest rates. This was now possibly the worst time to be a direct-to-customer business. In response to these devastating losses, Allbirds started to downsize. It stopped new hires, and it laid off over 8% of its global workforce. The company also announced new cost-cutting measures such as transitioning to automated distribution centers, scaling manufacturing, and optimizing inventory to reduce costs and product carbon footprints. However, the investors had spoken. The share price of Allbirds hit another low of $4.43 in August of 2022, and the market cap crashed down to just $630 million. What was once a $4 billion company has now lost over 83% of its value, and it doesn't seem like it's going to get any better in the near future. Only time will tell if the cost-cutting measures taken by the company will eventually bear fruit, but for now, the future of Allbirds seems bleak, and it would be a miracle if this company survives two more quarters. But who knows, maybe it might just find a way to pull through. Do you think Allbirds can potentially pull through? Let us know in the comments below, and also don't forget to check the links in the description to check out IWD Agency, some of the tools we offer to help businesses online, and a few customer success stories. Make sure you leave a like on this video too, and subscribe to our channel for more videos just like this. We'll see you in the next one.